You're talking outside there fine and uh, well sit down where you're going to sit and talk to me a little bit and I'll tell you. <laughs> you know what? We're going to going to, I may get up and move around, Okay. and that probably won't bother you. We'll start out this way. Okay. I'm out of breath. And in 30 minutes, I'll go check just to make sure everything's okay. Okay. Mr. Yet? Yes. Let me introduce myself. Okay. My name is Bernie Tilson, and uh, we're taping this for the Denver Public Library for the Tenth Mountain Resource Center at the library here at the reunion on uh, August 4th of 2007. And could you identify yourself, please? Yes, my, my name is Ben Yet. Uh, I don't know how extensive you want to. I was born in Portland, Oregon. I'm uh, in 1922. I'm approaching 85 years of age. Okay. I, like I say, I was born in Portland. Really, my uh, at least the, my partial adult life. I moved up to Seattle when I was about 10 or 11 years old, and went all through school, including college, uh, in Seattle. Okay. Can I hold up there? Did you spell your name? Did I ask you to spell your last my, name? My last name. You did. Okay. Could you identify what unit you were with in the 10th Mountain Division? Yes. I was with the, originally, the 10th Recon, and then MTG, Mountain Training Group, and finally, after uh, two years in the, uh, vicinity of Camp Hale and so forth, I, uh, when, we, when, they, when the 10th moved down to uh, Camp Swift, uh, I became a, a, in Company G, I, I was placed in Company G after the dissolution of the MTG and 10th Recon. Okay. MTG came into effect up there in Washington? No. No, no at Camp Hale. Came, okay. Uh-huh. Let's get back to that then. And the, the, first of the, the first of the units, uh, let's see, do you want me to go through a little more history before I got to Camp Hale? What I want to know is, is how did you get signed up in the tent? Okay. Uh, like I said, I was going to college, and I knew that uh, ultimately uh, I was going to go into the service. And I, all, all my life from about 10 or 11 or 12 years old, I was, I was active in at least mountain hiking, Boy Scout stuff, and I started skiing quite early in my life. I was only about 12 or 13 when I started skiing. And so I liked those things. <laughs> and uh, uh, so what I had done is to, uh, I, I sent all, all the information that I needed to the National Ski Patrol, and I was accepted actually into the ski troops before I was, before I went into the Army. I was informed that I was okay. So the, the minute I went into the Army, then I, you know, volunteered for the ski troops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was accepted by the ski troops. And uh, when I was inducted, why, uh, initially I went down to Camp Roberts, California uh, for infantry basic training. When I was at Camp Roberts, California, uh, I got spinal, spinal meningitis. And uh, that, deterred my uh, Army career a couple of months. And when I came back to Camp Roberts, why, then actually they had apparently lost my orders telling me to go to Camp Hale. But those I ultimately 
got those orders uh, after I came back from my bout with spinal meningitis, which was about two year, two months or so after I went into the service. Uh, I was uh, in, requested to, port, to report to uh, Camp Hale, and uh, I went up there, uh, individual troop movement, and uh, uh, the the outfit that I was with there in the camp uh, at Camp Roberts didn't have too much confidence in my ability to find my way up to <laughs> Camp Hale because I was an individual troop movement, you know, and they they put me on the train and everything. <laughs> and held their breath, and I made it to Camp Hale without any trouble. Do you remember what, what month and year that you arrived there? Uh, yeah, pretty close. Uh, it would be April of uh, 1943, right in, spring weather. right in there. It was good weather. When, when I reported there, why I didn't have any particular assignment, and I was just uh, put into a, a, a barracks where we came in, and, but I was only there for two or three days, and I, they told me to come to an appointment for uh, an interview to find out what they were going to do with me, and uh, I went to that interview, and and they were just starting that time, at that time, uh, this 10th Recon group. There was only about 25 or 30 guys in it, and uh, I was interviewed up there at Camp Hale, and the interviewee was, at that time, Captain John Woodward, who is still active in the 10th now. <laughs> and uh, Does he remember interviewing you? I don't think he does, but he certainly remembers me. We've we've had experience together. He's here at this uh, convention. Yes, we're pretty good friends. Well, anyhow, uh, we won't go too far into that. Anyhow, he interviewed me, and uh, and uh, it wasn't too comprehensive an interview. He had me. He asked me, you know, what I had done and climbing, skiing, and so forth, and he had me demonstrate without any skis or anything else, some turn ski, <laughs> and uh, that was about it, and, and uh, he knew, you know, where I, was going, where I was going to school. Matter of fact, he went to the University of Washington also, graduated three or four years before, the, uh, before I did. Uh, he's 92. Anyhow, I was I, I I was put in this tenth recon group, and what I did all all during that summer from April till fall was uh, learn uh, army techniques in climbing, particularly, but oh, all kinds of different things, hiking, but uh, but mainly in rock climbing and uh, rope work, belay, and all that. And I had some real good teachers. One was Peter Gabriel. They were European. We had several European people, Germans and Swiss, who came over and became a part of our army they, to get out of the, particularly out of Germany. And, and this Peter Gabriel was a very famous uh, guide and a, an awfully good teacher. And we had some other good teachers too. And uh, I learned my subject apparently pretty well. <laughs> I'll tell you about that later. Uh, but uh, then come uh, fall or winter, well, I was uh, sent on a detached service uh, thing to uh, uh, Camp McCoy, Wisconsin, and then uh, up into Upper Michigan. And up in Upper Michigan, we were teachers for a group of officers and non-coms who then came back to teach their division what we had taught them, more or less. And uh, 
we came back to Camp McCoy with them and uh, we were assigned, uh, each one of us, to a company of the 80, uh, the, what the heck, oh, the 76th Division is what it was. And uh, they were they were basically city boys from from the New York area and so they had quite a lot to learn in the and their teachers, the officers and non coms that were up in upper Michigan where we had the the initial school for them, uh, they had to learn a lot too and it was kind of difficult for them to learn all they had to learn in the time they had to learn it. So what what our job was to be with each one of those companies, one of us to a company, and uh, if they had any troubles with their uh, telling or doing the training, why we'd kind of help a little bit. and. Uh, my very first experience with the was the company was well, a lieutenant was showing the men how to lash a load onto a toboggan. There's a it's a process kind of like uh, tying shoes or something, except you ran a string of knots out on a rope and it come and hook them onto the sides of the toboggan and uh, and then you lace through that to make the load stay on the toboggan. Well, the lieutenant was having a considerable amount of difficulty. <laughs> he had it loused up. <laughs> and uh, I was there observing, and uh, finally why I decided that the lieutenant needed help. And so I explained to the troops that, you know, they had to learn fast, and, and the thing that he was trying to show them was really a, a, a rather difficult thing anyway and you didn't show up the lieutenant I didn't want to show up the lieutenant and uh, you know he had numb hands and everything I I was wearing mittens and I didn't take them off <laughs> and I did this lots of times it didn't come out well for me <laughs> but anyhow it did this time I did you know a beautiful job <laughs> Of, of putting the load on the toboggan, and I, I explained, you know, that I said, "You guys, look, this is not all that easy." And the lieutenant had a little trouble with it. And I said, "There's lots of other things that he learned that he'll be telling you guys later on, <laughs> so, so don't worry too much about the toboggan." Well, that that went real. That over went went over real well with the 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 captain, you know, the company commander, and. The other officers and the men. That was uh, in the winter of. And that would be the winter of 40, 43 and, and into 44, yeah. Uh -huh. How long were you there at Camp McCoy? Uh, well, we were there pretty much the whole winter because after we went through this training program, uh, I suppose that they were probably. See, we went up in Upper Michigan. I think we were probably up there for. A month with the troops. I mean, with the guys who were learning what they were supposed to do, and then they came back to Camp McCoy, Wisconsin. They were they were there for a month uh, teaching the troops, uh, their troops, you know, the mountain training bit, and uh, and then we went back up in uh, Upper Michigan for a 30-day winter maneuver, and uh, so. We were talking about three months in there, and something okay. like that. I was going to ask you about D series, but you didn't. I didn't do it, but this is what it was like. Oh, I was. You were doing. The I same was thing away. Thing yeah. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was teach. Yes, uh, and actually, I forgot to tell you this, but but we actually just at the very very start of D series, we were still there at Hale, and but. But the only thing, the only participation, was being observers, and uh, and on a couple of occasions, I think we were what they called an enemy detail, and we we hid out and uh, and uh, uh, 
you know, uh, massacred the troops, basically. <laughs> they, uh, you know, we let them walk through in the traps and stuff like that, and, uh, and uh, you know, it destroyed a bunch of them. <laughs> Just uh, on on <laughs> on the site, we didn't we didn't really destroy anybody. But anyhow, we didn't do that very long, and and, and to Wisconsin we went. Uh -huh. Tell me about Camp Swift. You said that uh, you changed jobs again when you went to Camp Swift. Well, then I was just in the regular infantry, uh, and actually this this business in. Uh, before Camp Swift, I, I had a, an, another experience when we came back to, to Camp Hale. As a matter of fact, someplace in between the time that we went to uh, Wisconsin and came back to Camp Hale, uh, the, the, the original organization, the 10th Recon, became the Mountain Training Group. Same people, but a different name, and the mountain training group became a, a part of the, when we started to wear the, the, the tent mountain patch, you know, and uh, actually when we were back there at Camp Sw or, uh, Camp McCoy, we were part of the second army. We had a second army patch, and uh, then when we came back to Hale, it became MTG, and we had the regular patch. Well, this is now coming up the next summer, and, and all that next summer, I was a teacher of uh, rock climbing and that, that type of activity, and I, I was not a very high-ranking person, but I taught officers, I taught all kinds of everybody, captains, majors, uh, colonels. I was a good teacher. I guess. Well, obviously, <laughs> and uh, those people were really uh, good pupils. The officers uh, couldn't goof off. <laughs> they had, they had to, you know, listen and respond. They were good. They were good to teach. There were some officers who had the same trouble that a private would have, as far as. Being afraid, you know, sure. and and having they called it sewing machine feet. They, you'd get standing on a on a ledge or something, and if you if you didn't move pretty quick, why well, you'd start <laughs> jiggling like you were pedaling a sewing machine. That's they call it sewing machine leg. Anyhow, so I did that. That was all that uh, summer, which would. Uh, summer, fall, would get us into, uh, up into the, let's see, I'm trying to see, at the time when we w went to Camp Swift. We went to Camp Swift actually in July of 45, 4, <laughs> yeah, okay. And uh, that's when I joined G Company. And uh, anyhow, I, I would just, you know, participated then in, in the kind of infantry training we had for preparations of going over to Europe. And, uh, you, you went on a couple of, uh, couple of pleasurable walks there, I guess. What was that? You went on a couple of pleasure walks there. Pleasure walks. Well, the very first uh, experience with uh, G Company, after uh, I had only been there a, about a week, and, and they hadn't been there very long either. We all came down at the same time. And uh, we had a, a 25 mile force march that, uh, in heaven only knows what the temperature was 110 or 20. <laughs> and anyhow, uh, in, in the company that I was in, uh, which is basically, you know, 200 people or something like that, uh, before we finished this march, there were 11 people still still marching, one of which was me. 
and I, and I was the highest ranking person oh, <laughs> in the officers, the everybody, everybody, everybody <laughs> keeled over. It was, it was rather, uh, you know, it was difficult. And uh, I, apparently from my time at Camp Hale and my time for years before that, I was in relatively good physical condition. My my mental condition had been questioned for a long time, but physically I was pretty fit. <laughs> Let me ask you about your company. Mm -hmm. Did they get better? Did what? Oh, you mean did you they mean get G? Better at those marches before G you G left? Certainly they did. Yes, G Company. Well, all of the whole the whole they all have come down from from Camp Hale and beautiful. You know, the weather was never hot, and, and we went right down to Texas and started doing this pretty doggone rough training, you know, getting for preparation for going overseas. And uh, yes, they, they kept doing things like that. We were walking 100 miles a week or so Everybody and learned to live without <laughs> water. <laughs> And uh, yeah, they got better. And I'm going to change focuses here. Uh, you know, it's a completely different focus for them and for me, for all of us, because uh, uh, it looked like we were going to be flatland soldiers instead of mountain soldiers. And let me let me uh, put you on a magic balloon right now and drop you down in the middle of Naples Harbor. Okay. Yeah, that was about. Uh, I don't know exactly, the 7th or 8th of January, someplace in there, which would have been 1945, right, the very start. That's four. That's five, yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, <we're> good. <laughs> you people can't see that, but he's cheating a little bit, t telling me what the year it is. Anyhow, uh, we, landed in, we landed in Naples, and... Uh, we didn't stay in Naples. We got on some little uh, landing craft type vehicles and, and went up and landed on a, a beach right near P Pisa. It was uh, Livorno, Leghorn, uh, was the place where we landed and we all proceeded in, in, in to a uh, Oh, to tra a training camp we went to briefly. We weren't there very long. And uh, then we proceeded on up into the mountains uh, above Florence. And uh, our outfit company, G, we had various uh, patrols and things like that there prior to going into combat. And, the name of the towns that you were in up there up north of Florence? Oh, Monte Catini was one of the places that we were, uh, where we were stationed. Uh -huh. And uh, then, uh, you know, I don't know, we were on there for, well, let's see, just uh, about four or five weeks altogether because we went into combat in the February, uh, and I don't know, so 17th, 18th, something like that. And uh, we were, oh, I think in the second wave of people going up uh, Mount Belvedere. And, uh, and I was, go ahead. This was at night? Hmm? This, you were going up Mount Belvedere at nighttime? No, we actually went up there in daytime. So you were, there was a first assault, was it? There you go, right. The guys had already gone up on Riva Ridge, and and our troops had part way up Belvedere the next morning. And, uh, uh, and un under enemy fire, they hadn't stopped shooting yet. <laughs> and... Uh, well, we got up and, and moved into position, and the Germans counterattacked it, and quite a few guys in the company, in G Company, were were killed or disabled in that very first 
uh, counterattack by the Germans, about 25% of the guys, I think the first night, were either killed or wounded. Uh, I thought that was a, t <laughs> I didn't like the odds very well. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, uh, we proceeded on, and only about two days or three days, uh, we were we were still going around on the side of Belvedere, and uh, and I was shot, wounded, and uh, I was I was hit by a tree burst, which uh, wounded me and killed four or five other people at the same time. It was kind of a, a lucky shot by the Germans. It, it came, we were on a very steep hillside and this, uh, uh, either, either an 88 or a mortar, we really didn't, never did find out for sure which, but anyhow. Uh, Do you it, remember where that was? Well, I told you it was on the side of Belvedere, oh, a little, okay, a little bit around, yeah, going around on the, on the right-hand side of it actually, and uh, the the thing uh, hit when a tree burst, you know, the the shrapnel comes down, and and uh, uh, I was uh, I was in the best position I thought I could be in, but anyhow, I wound up getting wounded across the tail end and. Uh, uh, my condition was relatively good. Uh, I proceeded to walk out of the, of the, you know, the place where I was wounded, and walk down to the, to a uh, med station. And uh, when I got to the, this is just a little aside. When I got to them, and I'd walk down the. They, they had stretcher bearers and stuff, you know, but here were these guys that were wounded much worse than me, and I found out, you know, later how many of them died. And I said, uh, you know, I could walk down, and I did. But when I got to this uh, aid station, the guy said, you just walk through a minefield. And I says, well, great. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad to hear. It. I'm glad to hear it now, <laughs> because uh, I, I, I apparently was just lucky, <laughs> or I would have been wounded a good deal worse, or, or maybe killed in the mine. Anyhow, I got to the aid station, and I was evacuated, and went to the. Uh, ultimately, I wound up not in the United States, but I wound up in an, an evac hospital or a, a, a general. A, what do they call those? Uh, it was, a, I guess they called them a general hospital. That was back at Leghorn, and uh, and I was in the hospital for thirty some days, and uh, then I had a, a recuperation thing before I went back to the G company. So I was missing from the company for sixty days of the worst bunch of the combat that where they were you, in. Where did you catch up with them? I caught up with them at the Po River which the war was practically over, you know, the Germans, uh, and, and actually just went up and, and stopped on Lake Garda uh, at, I uh, can't remember what town that was, but anyhow, right on the lake, and uh, that was where our company wound up, and and ultimately, we were, that's where we were when the Germans ultimately surrendered, so. Were you involved in fighting through the tunnels? We missed it. <laughs> our, our outfit, I know all about the tunnel, of course everybody does, but uh, we were ready to march out and to take that, take the lead at that particular point, and for some reason we were called back and some uh, another unit is the one that went there and got stuck in the tunnel. I mean, got a lot of guys got got killed in that tunnel deal, and we just we just lucked out. They missed that by the skin of our teeth, actually. And uh, there were I think that was the last bunch of casualties on our side from 
from then on. And uh, so, uh, you know, I had, I, oh, then after, after the, the war was over in Italy, why I did participate in the activities down there around Trieste and Udine. The day the war was over, you were in Torbole. Was what? You were in Torbole. Well, I don't really think that's the name of it, but anyhow, along right at the, the not, just just down below uh, uh, the, the head of the lake, and it's on the right-hand side, and uh, nice little town with a little harbor and so forth. And I should remember the name of it, but I don't. But it wasn't that. It wasn't that. Okay. <laughs> what? What? Describe what you felt and what you did when you heard the wall was over. Well, I did, I did. I was very happy that the war was over, but as far as, uh, well, I'll tell you, uh, let me go back just a teeny weeny bit. Uh, the war with Japan was still on, <clears throat> and uh, at the time, uh, you know, we were happy that, uh, very happy to. Uh, not be fighting the Germans, particularly through the Alps. I was very, that would be miserable, well, kind of like being in Colorado, a miserable place to try to fight somebody. <laughs> and uh, I was fortunate that, you know, we had, things had gone so well enough for us that we had all of the Germans uh, who were left, you know, were, were trapped down below us. and. Uh, we had, I don't know, it seems like it was 150,000 of them or something like that that were behind, you know, and uh, the ultimately uh, they were uh, put in a, a pri well, it wasn't really a prison camp, but it was on a great big airport where they had all these guys uh, camped out and, and they were they pretty much controlled themselves, actually, but we were there to guard them, but didn't really have to guard very much. And they, were, they had to stay in little barbed wire compounds for company-sized units, and uh, they were supposed to stay so far back from fences and stuff like that, and uh, so we had no trouble with them at all. They were, they were good prisoners and uh, we did that and I don't know we didn't do that too too long and then we wound up going down like I say down to uh, Udine in that area anyhow down close to Trieste where uh, Tito wanted to take Trieste theoretically and uh, our presence there made him change his mind and uh, draw back from that area so there was no there was no difficulty with the Yugoslav army or with Tito for that matter uh, but our presence there w was probably what changed his mind and then uh, you know we wound up coming home we came home from Naples and While you were in Area. What about it? While you, while you were there in the Trieste area? Yes. What were you, what were you doing? What were, you, what were your days like? I think basically all we were doing was being there, and we were prepared that if, if the Yugoslavs had have done anything, why, they would have had to do it to us, but uh, they didn't. Uh, did you, we, we were in did you several little cities. Up on the glaciers? Yeah, we played around up there a little bit uh, after the after the war or media. Well, that was still going on. I mean, with him anyhow, a little bit. But yeah, we had time to play a little bit there and uh, up in the snow country. And it was beautiful country and first okay. years. <laughs> uh huh. But then we came home and. Uh, uh, here, I mean Colorado Springs anyhow, is where we finally 
got out of the service. I did. Um, most of the people got out there. Some had to serve a little longer in the States, but uh, I got out from uh, Camp Carson and uh, went back to Seattle and finished college. <laughs> and uh, I did quite a little bit of skiing for, for quite a few years immediately after the war, but uh, then I had trouble with a couple of hips a few years back and uh, ceased, ceased skiing and that sort of thing. But what, what was your best experience in Italy? My best experience in Italy? Well, I would say probably uh, the time when uh, the war was over, or almost over, and we were sitting in a nice hotel on, uh, on Lake Garda and uh, had, a, had a room with a great big patio out in front, and... Uh, we sat in the sunshine, and our artillery was shooting at the Germans over on the other side of the lake, and they didn't have anything big enough to shoot back. <laughs> so we were we were watching the uh, artillery, and this, you know, this was not very very long after the the. Uh, one bunch of guys that were in a uh, in the duck, you know, and and sunk in Lake Garda, and they still haven't found them. But that was about the last major bunch of casualties, I think, in in the area, or or in you know in the in the war in that in that in Italy, and uh, that was very you know very bad, very unfortunate thing. And, it was very too bad that that happened, but that's that's me back home and when back you came to college. Back home and you, you went back to college and you went out into the workforce. What did you learn from the Tenth Mountain Division experience that helped you for the rest of your life? Oh, I would say that the biggest thing probably that I learned in uh, uh, from that activity was uh, to have uh, one thing, con confidence that uh, I could handle almost anything because I thought we handled some rather serious situations at times, you know, in the survey. And I could stand up to that, and and also I uh, I think that uh, another thing that that made me kind of philosophical that nothing is really too bad that that happened to me after that, you know, uh, compared to the, to that experience. Why almost anything that came in line, in along in life it was. It was okay. I mean, we could handle it, and uh, had a good, a good family and a good wife, and uh, and we're and we're still pretty healthy here. Almost eighty-five, and still play tennis three times a week. God bless you. <laughs> and um, well, this is kind of a sidelight, maybe, but I always had a pretty good sense of humor, and I, I think. Tell. I think that I think that if anything, uh, I I develop more of a sense of humor. I think more, uh, philosophy, like I said, uh, nothing bothered me too darn much. <laughs> Whatever came along, I figured out a way to do something about it, you know. And generally speaking, well, you know, it worked out fine. That's it's it's almost always true, not with me necessarily, but with everything, with everyone. Things are not as bad as 
people think they are usually. You, you keep uh, hanging in there why you usually solve your problems and so far anyway <laughs> so it's been okay is there anything that you would have liked to touch on that we didn't cover yet to, tonight oh I can't think of anything in particular but uh, I had lots of uh, I think the experience at, at Camp Hale was was actually pretty enjoyable I wouldn't think I wouldn't I can't, can't truthfully say that I enjoyed, uh, you know, the Italy too darn much. I enjoyed when it was over. Well, there was lots of times there when things were okay, and, and even with the wound and the hospitalization and everything like that, why uh, my condition wasn't nearly as bad as other people's conditions. And uh, so, so that was okay. And, uh, I hated to see so many of the guys, you know, wounded and killed. And uh, actually, uh, one of the fellows who was a, a real good friend of mine was in the, I mean, a real good friend from Company G was from Portland, and, and we were in the hospital together. So we, uh, you know, developed a real good friendship. and. We visited the guys that were in the hospital from our outfit after we'd gotten out, you know, and things like that. And, uh, oh, we went to Florence and Venice and uh, traveled around quite a bit uh, while we were, re were recovering. It, it, we, we, I did. I, I think Milt, his name was Milt Van Horn. We felt kind of badly that we weren't with our buddies, you know, sometimes, but uh, that was the, the fortunes of war, I guess, that uh, we came through the way we did. And so all in all, you know, it was not a, it was not an unpleasant experience. And I say it was, it was fun at Camp Hale, at the, uh, the you know, the climbing and the teaching and, and oh, we did some Skiing. I never taught skiing while I was there, but uh, I did a little ski patrol work on the hills and stuff like that. Came into Denver quite frequently. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, it was, what about Leadville? Okay. Well, nothing. I you know I've been in, I was in Leadville, but I didn't. I I'd, I'd come to the big city. I was from and I liked and I liked Denver too. It was a very good city too to uh, visit, you know, and... Uh, ben, I, good. I want to thank you very much for sharing this with us. Well, I'm, I'm happy to... Uh, I was reluctant to appear, actually, because I didn't think I could tell you all that much, <laughs> and uh, whether I have or haven't. Anyhow, that's the story. <laughs> and I think it's a tremendous one. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And, I, and it didn't take too long, did it? <laughs> yes, oh, it did don't, too. Don't worry about how long <laughs> the tape didn't shut off on us. <laughs> okay. Let me grab that. Okay.